Garmin has released a pair of brand new RV specific GPS units. And today we're gonna to give you a first look review. Welcome to RV Miles, I'm Jason Epperson. And today we're taking a look at a brand new GPS option from Garmin. Well, a pair of them actually, that are designed specifically for RV owners, the RV 795 and the RV Cam 795. They replaced the 780 series in the Garmin RV lineup, though those units are still available in some stores and will continue to be supported by Garmin. I've had the RV Cam 795 in my hands for a whopping two days now, but it just happened to coincide with the 300 mile travel day. I'm gonna to try to share some thoughts with you, but the headline is that navigation is going to be pretty much identical to the RV 890 and the 1090. I've had the 890 for two years now, so I can speak a bit about the navigation and how it works and what I like and what I don't. I do wanna say up front that this is not a sponsored video. Garmin did provide the unit for free for me to share my thoughts with you, but didn't require me to say anything about it or to even make this video at all. The RV Cam 795 and the RV 795 are virtually identical seven inch screen GPS units with one big difference. The RV Cam version has a built in front facing dash cam to record any incidents on the road or maybe even some cool sights. If you're not familiar with the Garmin RV lineup, the 1080 is the big boy with a 10 inch screen, the 890 has an eight inch screen, and this pair of 790s have a seven inch screen. That first number is the size of the screen. Here's a look at the 890 next to the 795 for comparison. Like I said before, the software is nearly identical with a few key new features in this one. So if you have one of the other units, you're not gonna find much that's radically different in this unit. Let's step back for a minute though and talk about the routing options you have if you're driving an RV cross country and why you might consider one of these over say Google Maps on your phone. Google probably has the best routing available for the everyday driver, but there are a few issues. The first is that RVs can't always go down the same roads as cars. There are sometimes length, weight, and height restrictions on roadways, especially those pesky overpasses. Garmin RV options all let you put in the specifications of your RV and attempt to route you around any problem roads. There are a few app options out there that'll do the same thing. The most used for RVers are probably the apps from RV Life and Togo, and they both do a decent job. They really shine with their planning tools with RV Trip Wizard and Road Trippers respectively, but they're hamstrung a bit by the need for cell service and perhaps by the small size of the screen on your phone. Satellite GPS units like Garmin, on the other hand, have all the map data built in. That's both a good thing and a bad thing. You can get routing information wherever you are, even if there's no cell tower for 100 miles, but it's a one-way communication. It's harder to get traffic data, weather, and road construction updates to a device that's not connected directly to the internet. Thankfully, Garmin tries to solve that problem and gives you the best of both worlds by connecting the Garmin to your phone via Bluetooth or cellular. When you're in an area with a cell signal, you get some enhanced features. And generally, the GPS just does a really much better job when it's connected to your cell phone. So if you've had problems with your Garmin in the past, I highly recommend you try that out. And then of course, those maps need to be updated. You have to regularly go in with the device connected to Wi-Fi and download map updates. You should do it before every big travel day if there's an update available. It's really easy to check to see if there's an update available, but when the map hasn't been updated, it's going to be wrong in some areas. Now, overall though, GPS routing is an inexact science. I've used all of the above options, often pitting them against each other, and they all make major, major blunders. They're just tools that help you out. If you're going for a big drive, it's always going to be best to plan your route in advance carefully. We like to use a motor carrier's atlas to check. Check the Department of Transportation websites and states that you'll be driving through for any major construction. Check with the campground you're arriving at to see if they have some special way to drive in and even check with other RVers in online forums about the state of the roads in an area. All that said, a good GPS really can come in handy driving through unfamiliar areas. So let's get into the nitty gritty of this new Garmin unit. The RV Cam 795 comes in a small box with a power cable and a suction cup mount. Right off the bat, I was really happy to see that the power cable is USB-C instead of a proprietary cable or older USB version. You can take it off and bring it inside and plug it in inside if you want without bringing the whole charger cable. 
The entirety of the front is the seven inch display. There are no buttons on the front or the sides. The back has a power button, the USB power port, a speaker, the camera, which is adjustable left and right, and two micro SD memory card slots. One for dash cam recordings and one for recording or importing routes. The dash cam slot is preloaded with a generic 16 gigabyte card. It's fairly lightweight. I weighed it in at nine and a half ounces. The mount is plastic with a heavy duty suction cup with a clip that goes over the back of the GPS. I find that it clips in and out pretty easily, but it's not as nice as the magnetic mount that comes with the 890. If you take the clip off, it has the same standard ball mount that other Garmin's use. So you might be able to make the clip work with other types of mounts. But I find in general that Garmin's suction cups are very good but of course you have to have them on a smooth surface. The power cable has a DC cigarette lighter style plug on one end and a right angle USB-C connector on the other, which is nice because it helps the cable hang in a nice position. And because it's USB-C, it can go either way. So you can flip it upside down if you have the cable like ran through your headliner. I, th I really wish though that someone would come up with a better way to easily power accessories like GPS units in a car without ripping apart the dash. Let me know if you find any great options. But this is where there's an important distinction between a GPS and a GPS with a dash cam built in. You really have to mount it somewhere in the windshield so the camera can see the road, of course. Just a dash cam, you can mount it behind your mirror or somewhere that's a little bit out of the way. With a GPS slash dash cam, you need to be able to see the front and the backside needs to be able to see the road. With the 890, I often would mount it down by our cup holders, and that was kind of helpful, at least to keep the cables from running around and to keep the dash area free. But I do enjoy having the Garmin in my line of sight so that I don't have to take my eyes too far off the road to look at it. I know it's kind of counterintuitive. It seems like it's in your way, but it actually feels a little safer to me to have it in the way. And luckily Garmin allows you to mount the RV Cam 795 pretty much anywhere in the windshield and you can rotate the camera on the back of it to get a pretty straight on view of the road. Setting it up is fairly easy. When you first power it on, it'll ask you what country you're in, your preferred language, and then it'll ask you to download and connect to the app on your phone. You can skip this step if you want and you can use the device without ever connecting it to your phone but you will lose out on a lot of features, particularly live traffic and the ability to save dash cam recordings to the cloud automatically, which it can do, which is nice, and we'll get to that in a minute. It'll then go through a vehicle selection screen. Every time you use it, you can select the type of vehicle you're using and if you're towing. So you can set it up to use in your truck while towing one of your several trailers or with no trailer at all, or you can set it up for your motor home and just leave it there if you want. You can pop it around from vehicle to vehicle and just change which vehicle you have preloaded in it. It also has a built-in battery, by the way. So if you wanna bring it into your house or into your RV to do some route planning, you can absolutely do that. And I, I found that the battery actually lasts a lot longer on this one than it does on my 890. So if I click on vehicle with trailer, I can put in my fifth wheel's height, width, and both the total length of the entire rig and just the fifth wheel's length. Then there's a spot for the entire rig's weight and the fifth wheel's weight. Once you set up a vehicle, it's easy to switch back and forth between them. So for trailer owners, it's really convenient to switch to car mode when your trailer is disconnected and you get an icon of a trailer and an icon of a truck or whatever, you can actually change the icons so that you can really easily see which mode you're in. My son in the back likes to tell me, dad, you're not in trailer mode when we've hooked up the trailer because he sees the little truck icon instead of a truck trailer. It's then gonna ask you for camera placement purposes, which side of the window you've put the GPS on and then how big the vehicle you're using is. This is gonna help line things up for some cool driver assistance features that we'll get to in a minute. Then you get a screen that helps you point the camera as straightforward as possible and you get to choose what you want recorded. I prefer to record audio, but not record the speed. I don't want some insurance company finding me at fault in a wreck when I'm driving two miles over the speed limit, for instance better not to give away that information. Okay, so now you can tell Garmin where you want to go. You can type it in or use voice activation. I find that voice activation usually works pretty well. It doesn't work quite as well as Siri or Google Assistant. Okay, Garmin, take me to McDonald's. Which result would you like? Number three. Going to McDonald's on East North Avenue in Belton, Missouri. 
but it, it does work. It does get confused by the radio sometimes. So I turn the radio off and I get really annoyed when my kids try to talk to it while I'm talking to it. But if I tell it where I wanna go, it usually works pretty well. If I can't find something, usually the easiest thing I do is actually pull the Garmin app out on my phone, type it in there, and then it shoots it directly to the GPS. You can also just have the map showing on the screen when you're driving around town without having a route entered. On the map screen, you get a speed limit display and also your current speed, along with a customizable slot that you can have show the number of miles you have left or the time you have left or the time of arrival, a compass, many other things. This is where though that the smaller size of the 795 loses out a bit over its bigger brothers. You get more things in the display on those. If I had one complaint about this unit, it's that I can't see both the hours left and the miles left on my trip at the same time. The bigger units can also be used in a vertical position, which I was at first very excited about when I got the 892 years ago, but I found I didn't really need it or like it that much. The map view is pretty square regardless. I actually really don't find much of a difference in how well I can see the map between this unit and the 890. I'm not gonna go much further into the navigation. It works pretty well. The voice prompts are pleasant and effective and you get some lane assistance while you're out on the highway. You get notified of steep grades and sharp turns along with an audible ding when the speed limit changes. All things that are really great for driving an RV. I like to be able to know that a sharp curve is coming up or how long I'm gonna be on a steep grade, what percent the grades are gonna be. That's all built in there. It'll tell you that stuff when you plan your route in the first place so you can sort of know where those things are gonna happen. If the traffic info changes, you'll get notifications asking you if you want to try a different route. Like most GPS units, you can go into settings and tell it if you want to avoid tolls, ferries, or highways. In fact, everything is highly customizable from the sounds to the volume, to the type of map displayed, to the vehicle icon. I also find that you can see the screen very well, uh, just like in the 890, and it does dim at night, which helps keep it from being super bright in the cab. When you're driving, you can have it track your route, which can come in handy on those networks of unmarked forest service roads to help you find your way back. And Garmin also packs in a bunch of trip planning features that frankly, I don't use all too often, like the ability to select from lists of points of interest and campgrounds. I'm probably going to do most of that stuff on my phone or on my computer at home. You can see your loyalty points at Pilot Flying J if you link your account, stuff like that. I just don't use that stuff, maybe you will. One thing that is very nice for those with motorhomes or older trucks that don't have an infotainment system, if you've linked Garmin to your phone, Garmin will act as that, allowing you to do hands-free calling and control your music or podcasts on your phone through voice features. It's really nice if you have a motorhome without that type of system. And I find it works pretty well as an analog to other infotainment systems, but it's going to conflict with your infotainment system if you are have one, but you can go in and shut those features off. One new feature on this unit that sounds cool, but I wasn't really able to check out is the ability to plan your arrival. You can actually get an overhead satellite view of the destination if you have it connected to your phone. That's new, usually it's just an animated view. But if you're putting your route in, you can actually click a plan arrival button and it shows you that overhead view apparently. And then you can sort of click on where you actually wanna park your RV or which of the seven entrances to the shopping mall you want to use. So you're not hamstrung by Garmin just trying to say, okay, I'm taking you to this mall and you're just going in whichever route that they tell you. You can actually look overhead, see the driveways, know if you can make a turn or not and click where you want to go. That will be really, really handy if it works. Unfortunately, on this test review unit, they actually didn't have that satellite connectivity turned on yet, but I'm told that's going to happen as soon as these are released. You can even mark your site in a campground instead of having Garmin just take you to the campground, it can take you to your site. Or maybe you want to go through a big national park and you have a specific spot that you wanna stop at, you can mark them yourself. Though I have to say, I've been really impressed with Garmin's ability to show you small points of interest, especially in national parks. We found it really handy driving through Yellowstone trying to find a picnic spot. Picnic tables show wherever you can pull over and eat. Other than that, the navigation experience, like I said before, will be pretty much what you expect. So let's move on to the other big feature of this unit, the dash cam. 
First off, I was a little disappointed that it's only a 1080p camera instead of 4K. Most dash cams these days are 4K. But that said, as a camera guy, resolution doesn't tell the whole story. Good 1080p is better than bad 4K. And this is good 1080p, and it works day and night. I specifically took it out at a challenging time at sunset to sort of see what it would do with the sun glaring right into it. And I thought it worked pretty well in that use case. The camera records whenever the unit is on, so it's not recording in front of the vehicle for security purposes when the car is off, unless you connect it to a power supply that doesn't shut off in some way. The clips are stored on the device to the memory card, and it's constantly recording hour chunks, and it just overwrites them one at a time as your memory card fills up. So you're only limited to the amount of memory card storage you have. If you have an important clip, something happens. If there's something important that you want to save, there is a, a save icon on the screen that you can touch that saves a 30 second clip and protects it from being overwritten. And you can even go through those hour clips and save them individually, protect them from being overwritten. Once you have saved a clip, if you're connected to your phone, it will also upload it to the cloud. Now it only stays there though for 24 hours, unless you pay $9.99 for a subscription that allows you to save it up there for up to 30 days. There's also a, a cheaper week long subscription. You can also play back the recordings right on the screen and right on your phone in the app, which I find very handy if you wanna show that to a cop, anything like that, that will be very helpful. It's also gonna save a recording if it detects any serious vibration, like if you were in a wreck. I find that this will go off with a large pothole, or if I just knock the unit a little bit, and the sensitivity is adjustable, so you can dial that in how you want it. Something interesting that Garmin's been able to do with the dash cam is add some driver assistance features that newer vehicles often have, but your motorhome or your older truck might not. Garmin uses the camera to actually give you lane departure warnings and imminent collision warnings. Our truck has both of those features, and I found that the lane departure warning is actually pretty accurate to what our truck is doing, though it does forget to go off sometimes, and sometimes it goes off when you're doing a lane change. The collision warning has been triggered by some shadows and overpasses, but I suppose any warning is better than no warning. The 795 is also compatible with Garmin's BC50 backup camera that will come on when you're in reverse. It will not, however, allow you to watch the rear view display going down the road, and it won't record the rear view camera. Overall, I found the RV Cam 795 to be a worthy addition to the Garmin lineup, and it is going to replace our 890 on our dash, really only because of the dash cam. The 890 has held up really well in the heat in the window, and I expect the 795 to do the same. Though, don't ever put up a reflective windshield cover on the cab side of it. I made that mistake with a melted phone mount once. Since the map date is preloaded, you do have to update it from time to time. And if I find that Garmin's led me astray, it's usually because I needed an update. Though not always, it's still an imperfect solution to a challenging problem, routing people on roadways that were built 100 years ago or more. If you're an occasional traveler and you don't want to spend a big chunk of change, you're probably fine using one of the RV GPS apps. And if you're in a pretty small motorhome, you might as well just use Google Maps. But if you travel a lot and you have a bigger RV and you want to go to places with limited cellular access, and especially if you have a big vehicle that could hit overpasses or get you stuck on roads that are a bit too windy for your liking, I think Garmin's options are really worthwhile. The RV Cam 795 is $599.99 and the RV 795 without the camera has a suggested retail price of $449.99. They are both available today as I am releasing this video. I hope I answered as much as I could. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions that I can answer. I'm happy to try. Please make sure to like the video if you got something out of it. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. And listen to us over on the RV Miles podcast for more about our life and our travels. And we'll see you on the next video.